Hi, this is Dennis Spath, publisher, Cutting Tool Engineering. I'm in Troy, Michigan at Seco North American Headquarters with Jay Ball, the product manager for Solid Milling. And we're doing a series of videos about optimized roughing. And Jay is going to explain to us what the uh, conditions were that, that brought on the development of this uh, milling strategy. Well, thanks, Dennis. I appreciate you asking that question, actually. So human nature has driven you know, us as humans to be bigger, faster, stronger, more competitive. The same holds true in the manufacturing environment. Uh, customer demands, consumer demands like yours and ours, you know, we want smaller phones, we want faster jet engines, we want faster cars, we want to be more efficient. That has put a big strain on manufacturers of those actual components. What that's also done is put a strain on the material manufacturers that supply materials to make those components. So with this race that's going on, you know, the lighter material is, the, the, the faster you can machine it, um, it's tendencies to want to work hardened. So there's a lot of difficulties when you get into these higher strength titanium, super alloys, duplex stainlesses. So what we've done to try to combat that is actually come up with these new types of advanced strategies such as optimized roughing. And then how do you define optimized roughing? Well, I'm actually glad you asked it because optimized roughing, depending on who you talk to, can have several different definitions. But the way that we see it at Seco Tools is use, utilizing the full flute length of an end mill. Um, so if you buy an end mill that, say, has an inch of flute length, you want to make sure you're using an entire inch of flute length, but then also controlling your radial stepovers. So radial stepovers typically with optimized roughing, depending on the material, are probably between 8 and 10 percent stepover. Again, as those materials get harder to machine, the stepovers will reduce. So it seemed like you'd want to use optimized roughing for just about everything, because why wouldn't you want to use the entire tool? That's actually a really good point. I'm glad you brought that up because everybody sees optimized roughing, you know, reading magazines and articles, looking on the internet, looking at YouTube. And as good as it is, it has its benefits and it has its limitations as well. So for me, when I look at customer parts, I look at the complexity. Um, if it's a straight walled prismatic part, doesn't have a lot of complex 3D contours, that's actually perfect for optimized roughing because again, you're able to utilize the full flute length but also, too, you have to look at your machine tools. You know, does your CNC machine have the right control? Does it have the right look ahead? Does it have the high speeds and the high acceleration and deceleration that optimized roughing demands to be effective? So all that stuff kind of plays, you know, into is optimized roughing right for my parts? Is it also right for my setup and my machine? And, and what about the cam software that, that a shop uses? That's actually a really, really good question because optimized roughing strategies are controlled by complex algorithms. And there's a lot of logic that goes behind the tool path generation. So to actually program these types of strategies by hand is almost impossible. I'm sure there are a few people out there that can do it or they've given it a try, but to control the arc of contact, to make sure your angle engagement is consistent, you have to use you know, really complex CAM softwares. And I would say that probably 90% of all CAM softwares out there, I'm not gonna name names, but they have some sort of optimized roughing strategy because it is becoming so popular to, to use in machine shops. What if people have a question about when to use optimized roughing? The best thing you can do is, you know, reach out to your Seco Tools technical specialist or the tech team. We have a lot of experience, both hands-on uh, and we do a lot of R&D testing. So we want customers to understand there's resources out there to help them figure out is optimized roughing uh, best for their application or is it a different type of strategy. So we've got a lot of resources customers can reach out to to help them figure out is this the best strategy for my parts.